Hello! In this video, we're going to take a look at an easy page template system for SharePoint. This is something you can set up quickly and then reuse anytime you want to develop a page template you want to reuse and deploy across all your SharePoint sites. Now, there are various methods to do this. For example, you can use scripting in PowerShell to programmatically define pages and, and do templates. There's other methods as well, but in all of these cases, it's difficult to set up these page templates. The system I'm gonna demonstrate in this video will show you a way to do this that's easy to understand, easy to reuse, and is gonna simplify that whole process so that this concept of reusing page templates is not difficult to do in SharePoint. So if you want to set up this system, follow along in my video. Now, let's get SharePoint smart. Okay, here I am in my SharePoint online site, and I'm gonna start out by giving a demonstration of what this does. I do wanna mention before I forget, there's a link to a page in my website on the sharepointdashboards.com site, which gives all of the instructions that I talk about in the video. So be sure to hit that link, and then that way you can copy the code snippets and follow along with the instructions that I'm providing in this video. All right, so let's come back to SharePoint and let's first of all talk high level about the concept of what it is we wanna do. It's not hard to copy files and pages in SharePoint. When you go in the UI, if you check next to an item, there is the ability to uh, do a copy command from that directly, however, that's limited uh, to doing a copy of a page within the same site. So what we're looking at here, I'm just in the site pages directory for a site. I created a site called page templates. And what I want to do is be able to just create pages and make them look however I want without having to do any code or programming or anything of that nature. So. Maybe there's a certain pattern that I like. I like to use the picture web part. Uh, maybe I like the page set up in a particular way. I can just use the ordinary method of editing a page and making adjustments to edit that individual page until it looks the way I want. But instead of having to repeat those steps or have to do anything complicated to then define this page as a template, I'm simply gonna have a site in SharePoint, which I called page templates which I'm gonna to use to store pages that I've created, which I want to use as templates. There are pages that are gonna be copied over to other sites in SharePoint so that I can reuse those at any time. So this is just the site pages directory that is in every SharePoint site. It just happens that I'm using this as a jump off point to be able to generate pages in other sites for me at any time. So I can add to my site pages library whenever I want. So the process works like this. I've defined some pages and we're gonna give an example real quick. So I have this page, which I just called visual page. I gave it a generic name and I want to deploy that out to another SharePoint site. So I have a completely separate SharePoint site I made for demonstration, I just called it page templates testing. As you can see, this is just the boilerplate content that shows up on an out of the box team site in SharePoint. And of course, I don't wanna use this for the home page, so we're gonna change that. So in order to use this system, it's very easy. I need the URL of the site that I want the page to go to, and then I can click on this button which will trigger the workflow. Now, you may be wondering about the button, and there's a link in my instructions which tell you um, the template you can use for that. That's a free template of the SharePoint dashboard site. So I'm gonna click that. And this is using a special type of flow trigger which is called for a selected item. 
and I have some inputs. I have four inputs that I need to provide. I need to provide the URL of the target site. I just pasted that in. I have the option to tell it to use this page as the home page in that target site, or if I don't select that, then it won't apply that additional setting. And then I need a page name and a page title. Now the page name is what appears in the URL at the site. There are some instructions here and it tells you not to use spaces. So um, I'm just going to say sales home and you'll notice I put a dash in that. And then the page title is what actually appears on the page at the top of the page in the banner image. So in that case, I certainly can use spaces. So I'm going to do sales home, but I won't um, put a dash. That's just the text that appears on the page. That's everything I need to do to kick off this workflow. So most of your setup is going to be in Power Automate. We're going to review that. So right now my workflow is running and I'm going to see a page here after a little while. It can take a little bit of time for your workflow to run. Last time I ran this, it took about a minute. Um, it did it really fast that time. I don't know why uh, it sometimes takes longer, um, but in any case, that was quick. So let's go over to the site and let's see what it did. So I'm in my target site and there's sales home. Notice that it's named with sales home, which is what I wanted. And now I can click on that. What I also want you to notice that it doesn't say visual page at the top, which my source page did, it changed the title. That was because of the input I provided. So now this is over here. Recall also that I told it, I want this to be the new home page for my target site. So let's go ahead and check that. And it did load. Uh, that page is the home page. So it applied all of the settings for me. So now you see how this tool works. I can copy more pages. Maybe if you don't want it to be the home page, you just don't toggle on that option. So I could define a whole library of standard pages that I want to reuse in this special site I created called page templates. I can just keep adding more pages and deploy any of those out to any SharePoint site anytime I want. So for the rest of this, we're going to talk about some of the setup steps. So the first thing you're going to do is want to create a SharePoint site called page templates, and that'll just be used for this purpose. It's just a place to store these page templates that you're going to create. Once you've done that, I recommend that you use the provided all pages view, and then you can update the columns that you're going to use that type of thing. Now linked in the instructions, which are below the video, there is information about how you can apply uh, this image template. So you can provide a preview image to help you know which template you're applying. And then also this flow button. This flow button has the same effect as if I check next to the item, then go up to the command bar under automate, I'm going to see this workflow I created called deploy page to site. So the button allows me to not have to go through those extra steps. I can just kick it off directly from the button as you saw. So I can just click on that. It opens the side panel. Um, so that's how that works. Okay. So, what I would recommend is go ahead and create some dummy pages just to get started. Now you're probably thinking about well, what do I even want for my page templates and you're still working on that. Just so that you can get your workflow in place, I would suggest just make three or four dummy pages just to get the ball rolling so that you'll be able to do testing. So you can see I've got four here, but naturally you can have as many pages as you want. You won't have to update your workflow or anything like that uh, when you add new pages. Um, it's automatically going to work. So you can just keep adding and updating these pages anytime that you need to do that. Now there is a special thing that you're going to need to do for this workflow that's a little bit unusual. We need the global unique identifier for the site pages library in your new page template site. And the way to get that is to go to your gear icon, go to the library settings, click on more library settings, and we need the code that you're going to see in the URL. So at the very end of the URL, you're going to see this long string of characters, and we specifically want the string of characters that's between percent 
7B and percent %7D. That is URL encoding of some characters, but the actual GUID or global unique identifier for a library is this string of characters between the sections that I mentioned. You're going to need that for your workflow. So go ahead and copy that and then paste it over to a text document and uh, have that ready to do in your workflow. Now everything else is provided uh, in the instructions. We've got some screenshots to help you. Here's a screenshot showing what I just mentioned, how to get that uh, identifier for your library. And then at that point, you're just going to create blocks in flow as I've demonstrated here. So you're gonna begin your workflow like this. So um, when I'm in Power Automate, I'm gonna do a new flow and do automated cloud flow, skip this first screen and what we want to do is turn off Copilot, turn off the new designer, and that way we can go into the regular flow design mode. And you just type it out, say for a selected item. And then it's going to uh, provide it as the first option. So you click on that and that's how you're going to begin. So you need to explicitly pick your site address. And then as I mentioned, you're not going to be able to use the drop down for list name. This is going to be entered dynamically, and that's by entering the GUID, the global unique identifier for the library that's required in order for this workflow to work as expected. Now, as you saw, when I click to kick off the workflow, it needs four input parameters um, for each time you're going to run this. We need to know the URL for the target site. We want to know whether or not this page should be set as the home page in the target site. We need the page name, which is the name that is part of the URL that you see at the top of the page and the page title, which is just the description of the page that appears on the page itself. So we need those four items in the workflow. So make sure you set those up as input parameters on that first flow block. After that, you're going to be using uh, what you see right in the screenshot. You need to make sure you um, use the dynamic references. And when you have those set up, it's going to look just like my screenshot. So follow along through those flow blocks, and then you can copy and paste the parts where you see a little bit of code snippets. Um, some of that is a little trickier, so you got to make sure you have that syntax right, but all you need to do is duplicate exactly what you see there. I'll go ahead and um, go back to my flow just to walk you through from that perspective. So I called my flow deploy page to site, and now I'm going to go in there and um, examine some of these items. So here's my input parameters. Those are all going to be required. Uh, when you Add inputs, they are required by default, so you will not have to adjust this setting. There's the GUID, uh, the global unique identifier. I just pasted that in for list name. And then um, we'll just go through my other flow blocks. The first one simply copies the page to the target site. This flow block is the copy file flow. I've renamed it to make it uh, more understandable in my flow, but that is the copy file flow action. The next one is a send HTTP request to SharePoint action. So make sure you select that type of action and then provide the code values as shown. Next, we need to publish that. You might notice, for example, when you edit pages in SharePoints, um, they can be in a non-published state. We want it to be published so everybody sees the update. So that's what this flow block does. This is a, another send HTTP request to SharePoint block. And then we have one last thing we need to do, and that is to, if the user indicates to set it as the home page, we've got a condition check here to see if they uh, said that that's true. In that case, we do this third send HTTP request to SharePoint block. And this has the function to identify and set that page as the home page for our target site. So that is it. That is the entirety of the workflow that you need to set up. 
Okay, that's it. I have shown you the steps to create this uh, page templates tool and you can set up a workflow. And once you have this in place, now you've got a system that can be reused at any time you need for your whole SharePoint tenant. So if you have certain standard pages that you like and you wanna reuse that across multiple different sites, this gives you a system where you do, don't have to do any special PowerShell scripting or complicated workflow or anything where you're going to have to get into workflow repeatedly just to get the benefit of reusable page templates. So I hope, hope you'll take a look. Uh, the instructions for this are linked below the video and uh, you should be able to just follow along with that and copy the code instructions and you'll be able to be able to have your own uh, page template tool just like the one I showed. Good luck!